After 20 plus years of conservation campaigning, rhino poaching was at an all-time high. Clearly, something wasn't working. Jilly and Mark traveled to Kenya to visit the northern white rhinos at Old Pajita Conservancy and studied them for 12 months. The artists understood an urgent solution would be needed to alter history and save rhinos. They decided to make the world's biggest rhino sculpture and install it in the heart of the world's biggest city. A new approach, unlike anything before it. At the start of 2018, Sudan, the last male northern white rhino, fell critically ill. Urgently working to complete the sculpture before his death, Jilly and Mark launched the last three on March 14th in Astor Place, New York City. Hundreds came to the opening, along with an unprecedented amount of global press and public support. The sculpture was aligned with the free augmented reality app that brought the northern white rhinos to life in so they could be seen, loved, and adopted all over the world. Then, the unimaginable happened. Only three days after Jilly and Mark launched the last three, Sudan died. The world stopped. The sculpture took on new importance as a memorial to the imminently extinct northern white rhinos. Thousands visited the last three. People brought flowers to the base of the artwork and shared their grief. A passionate audience was ignited from New York to Sydney and everywhere in between. Hundreds of features across the world's biggest news outlets and millions of social media posts were shared about the last three and Sudan's death. The sculpture fueled countless impressions, both online and in Astor Place. Rhinos had the world's attention, and Jilly and Mark knew this was the time for action. They created a global petition to demand trade sanctions be placed on Vietnam, the biggest consumer of rhino horns and driving force behind poaching. With the entire world aware and inspired by the last three and Sudan's legacy, this generation will be remembered not for driving rhinos to extinction, but for saving them.